Welcome to the St. Michael Fall Podcast Series. My name is Ken Brannan, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is discipleship. May you be blessed for the Christian journey. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, beginning at the first verse. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. When some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, he left them, taking the disciples with him, and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all of the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. Here ends the reading. A disciple is someone who follows a teacher, leader, or philosopher. A Christian disciple is someone who follows Jesus the Christ. While there are many disciples in the world, not all of them are Christian disciples. We see this distinction in the lesson from Acts today. During one of his missionary journeys, Paul comes to Ephesus. There he finds some disciples, but they are disciples of John the Baptist, not Jesus. Now, John had a significant following. He was a powerful reformer. There were many who believed that he was the Messiah. However, John consistently pointed to Jesus as the chosen one of God. While the Gospels make it sound like the transition from following John the Baptist to following Jesus was quick and painless, that's probably not the case. We get a glimpse of the tension between these two leaders when John sends two of his disciples to ask Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Even John was becoming impatient with Jesus, who wasn't ushering in the reign of God the way that John expected. The struggle between John's disciples and Jesus' disciples was probably messier and more pronounced than Scripture suggests. So in today's lesson from Acts, years after the resurrection, Paul comes across 12 disciples of John and asks if they have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. They say, no, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. This distinction is important. John baptized with water for the repentance of sin. He prepared people for the coming of the Messiah. Jesus, on the other hand, baptized with the Holy Spirit and truth. While John's work was local and preparatory, Jesus' work was universal and complete. After explaining to the disciples that Jesus was the fulfillment of John's work, Paul laid hands on them and baptized them in the name of Jesus. They began to prophesy and speak in tongues, a sign that the Holy Spirit was with them. These disciples of John became disciples of Jesus. They accompanied Paul as he taught in the synagogue and the lecture halls, and even traveled with him after he left Ephesus. What does it mean for us to be a follower of Jesus? How is the Spirit of God being poured out in our lives? Although some Episcopalians are charismatic, we're not usually known for uttering prophecy or speaking in tongues. So how do we know that the Holy Spirit is with us? How do we know that we are following Jesus and not someone or something else? Look no further than our baptismal covenant. In preparation for baptism, 
we make three renunciations and three affirmations. What do we renounce? We renounce Satan, the evil powers of this world, and the sinful desires that draw us from the love of God. In a sense, this first part of the baptismal liturgy is the baptism of John. We repent of the things that enslave us and commit to go in a new direction. These three renunciations are followed by three affirmations, all involving our commitment to Jesus Christ. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Who says Episcopalians aren't born again? After affirming the Apostles' Creed and make promises to walk in the way of love, we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As water pours over our head and possibly our body, we are washed in the name of Jesus. Then the oil of chrism is placed on our foreheads and we hear the priest say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Do you see that? We are baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Spirit, just like those disciples of John in Ephesus. Are we being true to our baptism? Are we turning away from evil and toward Jesus? Do our lives show evidence of the Holy Spirit? Not everyone utters prophecy or speaks in tongues, but there are telltale signs that the Holy Spirit is with us. Paul says that the fruit of the Spirit includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we follow Jesus, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we become a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.